Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for this live stream event. Before we begin, I'll just quickly review two items, our code of conduct and our event guidelines. So code of conduct for Microsoft Reactor, um, we just ask that you're respectful um, during the presentation and the session. We ask uh, that um, you are professional, remaining on topic. We encourage engagement in the chat, but just ask that you, um, you know, keep it civil while we go. That's the summary of the code of conduct. You can review it here. I'll share the link in the chat as well to our main page with code of conduct. And then if this is your first time joining us, this session is recorded. It will be available on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel, as well as a few other YouTube channels that we're cross-promoting to. Um, if you have questions or comments, feel free to drop them into the chat. If this is your first time joining us on a live stream, you do need to have an account set up if you're coming in from YouTube. Um, so just set that up now if you want to interact there in the chat. If you're um, unable to do that now and you do have questions that you want to get answered, feel free to reach out to us after the session concludes and we can get that set up and um, contact our speakers and try to get those questions answered for you at a later time. So just one second, sorry, just my computer's going slow. The fun of live sessions. Uh, so today's session, so let's pull up our speakers here. Just one second. There we go. So we are joined once again with the Microsoft Security Insights Show. This is a weekly podcast that provides information, news, tips um, on Microsoft security solutions. Um, and we are hosting them once a month to have a live show. So welcome all, welcome back again. Um, we have a guest speaker here today, Jack Van Ziel. So I'll let you all take it over from here. Recorded July 20th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Good evening, Frank, Rod, Rebecca, and Jacques. How's everyone doing today? Doing great. Well, Where, where's, great. where's Edward? Brody, did you not tell him that we were showing up tonight? You know, he has the calendar invite, Rod. I'm pretty sure he was oh, one of the founding members of the podcast. So it must be yeah. must be more important than us, I suppose. Well, I don't know really how we're going to fill time up front because, you know, Ed usually leads us in and then discusses his entire week, entire week. For about 20 minutes so i'm, I'm gonna kind of uh, i got some cool things to show you guys so i think i can well, i can chew up the oh time. thank you frank so you hey yeah, by the way remember keep it yeah. civil that was the first thing we heard yes please follow the rules frank thank you <laughs> all right so first of all i'd like to thank everyone that called out the show on uh their linkedin uh badge on their sc100 uh you know we're very excited to be part of your learning journey um second of all I i'm sad to announce that the hottest discord channel now in our discord server <laughs> is the gardening channel i don't know how that happened but uh if you want all your gardening tips join our uh, discord uh, server i think brody now, must have had his family vote I, yeah my family has no idea how to vote <laughs> <laughs> my mom could barely email <laughs> so a few weeks ago we uh we talked about the who hacked game by microsoft yeah. Uh, that they have set up so you can go in um, and they were nice enough to send me not not uh, everyone else uh, a gift for uh, mentioning and promoting it the first thing that they sent me is a nice comic book about <gasps> who hacked cool. <gasps> what? What the... then, all right all right it only keeps getting better you know they what? actually sent me a right. full board game for who hacked what what? Yeah. Cool. Can you How believe do we get that? This? No. How do we get this? I no. haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what's in here. I, so. I don't. I don't think it's for. No, you've done wow, something. Look at this. This yeah, is like. Done. This is like the real deal. Like. Uh, I didn't know we made a board game to go with it. Four motives. Uh, I, I really have not opened. So this. cool. This full board game here. See, that's I'm so that's, jealous. That's where the rest of the budget went. Yeah, I got to tell a you. Huh. Yeah. There's even like little players in here. I'll have to open up the board game here and 
the actual board and see what the deal is uh, yeah, inside. But board. you guys can keep talking while I. Uh, well, you know exactly what I'm going to do after to... tonight's show. I'm going to talk to Maria <clears throat> about that. I like games. Jacques, Jacques, I'm sure would love this game. And Eddie the Munster, I'm sure would love this game as well. So, Eddie the Munster. Have you seen Franklin's fancy yeah. board game? No, thanks for joining us, by the way. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I pesty customers. They always just want you to work. Customers, yeah. man. You they're can just tell them where you live. That way so you can customer, get rid of it yeah. easier. Yeah. So what 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 Dungeons and Dragons game does Franklin draw him up now? Who hacked? This is who hacked. Dice. They actually made a board game about right. it. Do you know what this said? I guess there's some sort of uh, who hacked uh, board game. I thought it was all virtual. That really bothers me. That really bothered me. Ego. Uh, ego, It says ego, revenge, greed, and mischief. They all sound like reasonable things to do. I mean. There you go. (laughs) Don't do that. Jacques! How you doing, sir? Oh, well. uh, Enjoy enjoy life at the moment. Okay. uh, after all, Microsoft is kind of slowing down for a month or two, so I'm trying to do everything I can in terms of learning some new stuff before we're going to get busy. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, actors don't sleep, so apparently I do, but um, I'm trying to do our best, I suppose, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. I'm the same way. I've been actually having to do real work here the last seven days, man. I'm kicking my butt, and Rod, I figured out the ZPA thing. What was it? Firewall. So port. Port. Because I did TCP dump and uh, looked for yeah. what it was listed and everything. I looked at it. And um, they have explicit allows rather than denies. So yeah. if you don't yeah. qualify to port, yep. and it wasn't any of the ports that were listed, but I did learn something else. So um, Rod and I were troubleshooting. Oh, are we re- Are we live? Yeah, yeah, we're like, totally live. live. We're, we're, we're like, uh, we're already in the middle of the show. You can talk yeah. about it. Oh, oh yeah. we've already started. Yeah, if you want to provide everybody with context so that we're not three quarters of the way through yeah. your story when you like start it. Yeah, I'm, I'm all gay. You're like all serious about the stuff, but that's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, oh, didn't, yeah, get, for... I didn't get to do the announcement. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm discombobulated. I Customer did a hat. Job of it. You would have been very upset with me. I almost <laughs> forgot the line. I'm like, what day is it? How do we do this again? I've only been doing it for a year. So got a customer. They have Zscaler, ZIA, which is the firewall enterprise, and they have ZPA, which is the endpoint firewall. Uh, getting the uh, Zscaler or ZIA, uh, basically, firewall was easy because it's just really doing Ceph, right? The connector is inside of Azure Sentinel, uh, but it has a name connector, and that name connector, we know what that does in there. It just creates, you know, the parsers and normalizes already there for you. And or if, if you choose to go through the content hub, it'll deploy analytic rules, workbooks, uh, parser, function, something else. So raw, I asked Raw for help. I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm stumped here. And I, you know, the Z scale is going to the same log collector, yet it works. Well, the ZPA has something that you have to go in, download a, a comp file. Then you have to modify that. The configuration file, comp file, C O N F, Charlie, Oscar, November, Foxtrot. Thank you. Um, and and then you have to put in the login format, the ports listening to, uh, what is bound to as far as uh, the, the the interface. And this thing, this Z scaler, I'm sorry, ZPA uses port two two zero three three TCP. Okay. It says, do not assign this port to any conflicting ports such as, you know, uh, 25226 and 254 something, else, the AMA agents, right? Those ports. Makes sense. Makes sense. So I, I still couldn't get it to work. I beat my head up on this too. I see, I told you, you got to go open a ticket. You, you need to talk to your firewall guys and end up being a firewall. But I also learned something else. So I wanted to get used to the way that these the, the, these external devices get set up when they're asking you to create these customized comp files that you put on your log collector that then sends the traffic to your log analytics workspace, which then resides in Azure, which is was sitting on top. Okay, Meraki does the same thing. 
when you go through, I set it up, Rod, and it says, this Meraki solution uses port 22033. Make sure it doesn't conflict with anything. <laughs> then you have to go in and modify the rsyslog com file to put in the filtering parameters. Otherwise, it's going to come in junk, even if you have the parsers in there. So I got all the signal size set up. Now, only thing I got to do now is go to my uh, Cisco Meraki switch slash yeah. clients and point the IP address. So to, what, was uh, the, what was the first thing out of my mouth? Firewall. Yeah, it was a port. Port. Yeah, you're like, Ports, the post the port's not open yet. I was like, yes, it is. And I, I'm thinking that the ZIA and Z scale are doing the same thing. And they're not. ZPA is it, it sends events. So this also helps me because I'm helping a customer with Cisco Firepower next week. Same thing. What is flying over that port? Is from my ask it is there any is there any password or RPs or any anything authenticating through that port that they're sending? Well the, the traffic is encrypted if it's sending from the log analytics uh i'm sorry the log collector to the log analytics workspace that yeah. house sentinel over 25 226 or something like that if you are doing it with third parties that's a good question is it jock or jock 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 that's a good question because uh when you do it with cisco firepower you have to go through the cisco power firepower uh, command portal and you yeah. have to download a key file. You have to put that key file on the log analytics collector, right? Otherwise it won't talk, right? So they do a couple of things. They make you verify your workspace ID. So when you do that manual config in Linux, you have to cut the, 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 the workspace ID, put it in there, make sure there's no trailing or any, any spaces that'll drive you crazy. Um, and then um, you restart the, uh, um, uh, what do you start? Syslog service? One of the service again. You restart the AMA agent, basically. Um, yeah. yeah, MMA. So it's, it's, um, <laughs> it's, it was a learning thing. I've spent more time in Linux the last week or so than I have in a long time. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I got it. So we'll, we'll see. Um, There's something I can tell you if you do passwords, anything over it, how to grab it, even if it's encoded, encrypted. We did it the other day. We were playing around with it. And there is something that happens just before it sends. And basically, I will show you a way yeah. that you can grab it and then you can utilize it and encrypt it before it gets sent. And you can see all the traffic. Wow. Maybe we should do this against Ed's environment. That yeah, way. you want to do a man in the middle live demonstration against Ed's uh, environment? We, did, we were great. playing around with it to see how we can, uh, how we can <laughs> firewalls and express routes and stuff. How can we not um, get ha hackers hacked? if it's yeah. wrongly set up so we we actually check the configurations before it goes live and we do all, all sorts of things till we find the right configuration so that you can't grab it there's a there's a professor slash mr x i would say that wrote this one big program that actually it's it can grab rdps anything like that it's and and administrative passwords anything that you send and okay. it's very good I I'll show you how it works. I, 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 I want to yeah. see it because I want to see it too. I, Jock, I'm used to working with Rod Trent. <clears throat> Rod, Rod Trent analyzes ports and protocols just by picking up the Ethernet cable and holding it in his hands. He's like, <laughs> hmm, password. Yeah, yeah, passwords. <laughs> <laughs> Right, just a, he just holds it out in front of it and he he pulls it out at the matrix. He's like, oh yeah, that's your problem right there. Oh, this reset bit here, and I'm like, okay. We all we all have our skills. Well, I have skills. My, my, of it is, it's not actually because it's the technology. It's because you, some human made an error by configuration. Yeah, yeah. But hey, I, I, my apologies to our listeners for me being, I won't say late. My co-hosts have a bad habit of starting before I get here. That's that's what that is. Right? Starting on time. Okay. Start, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Start on time. <laughs> um, I'm sure Brody has done in, uh, introductions of yourself. We have not. But... We have not. You just barged in and did your Edward thing. That's that's <sighs> fine. But here, I'll tell you what, Ed, we take a, take a load that, off. Really? You've had a busy day. Let me yeah. let me just take this take this rain here and say thanks what? for joining us, everybody. Jacques, welcome to the show. Why don't you introduce yourself, what you do, and explain a little bit about yourself and what you'd like to show today? Sure. I'm uh, <clears throat> Jacques Montal. I'm the National Cyber Defense Specialist for um, Canada. Um, which is a, I would say it's a role 
that was it's not actually by court. So um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm a TS, okay, for threat. But uh, because I'm autistic and stuff like that, and I poke the bear all the time, and um, I, I don't really, it's going to sound very weird, but I actually don't know Microsoft products at all. I come from a Linux background. So, and I've been working for Microsoft over 12, 12 13 years, but I've always been in the Linux world. So um, I started hacking when I was around about 11 years old. And um, it just, I don't know, it's just things that stuck with me. And um, I then eventually worked for a lot of other organizations through the years and um, always in security. And my biggest, biggest, I think, breakthrough was storage and network attached security. And then... Um, Kind of Microsoft asked me to help in with Windows 8 at the time because I don't know if you guys remember the Windows 8 times. It was a very dark times. Period. And um, <clears throat> helping to build security and utilizing with the, with the security teams and stuff like that. And kind of that's how I got in. So my job basically is, of my work is, is GitHub. I play all day long and get up, check what, what uh, programs is really working, what is not. I'm trying to help and explain to customers why certain tests aren't working, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, pen testing, the big word, pen testing. Why do people use certain programs and buy, and some people use freeware, and what is the results they are getting, especially when they don't understand and know how Windows are working, and especially when they don't deploy some of the uh, E3 functionalities we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, just touch a little bit of things there. <clears throat> and um, yeah, that's kind of where I come from. So um, I'm sitting the whole day and <clears throat> speak to customers and level between four to five hundred more deep, and ask them what is the stuff that they you know before they go to bed at night. What is the stuff to freak them up, and <clears throat> why can't they see certain things happening in the E5, which is the <laughs> MDE slash ATP. A functionality so i'm siloed strictly on threat i don't touch emails i don't touch any of those things i'm on thread i'm on windows um core and how that basically works it, are you are you primarily focused on um offensive uh activities or defenses or both so you're talking then in purple team so i used to be just uh defensive um then i went over to offensive and i was there for a few five years and now i'm kind of in the middle i'm purple so i'm not mm -hmm. to test or see what a customer go through and then we rebuild it in azure we retested why did it go through and then we give it to, uh, to architects and say this is why that particular hack went through because there wasn't a setup done or there was a wrong setup done or they didn't test the setting the setup before they went live and um so i'm going to talk a little bit about that as well so that's kind of what i do yeah you you, you mentioned such a jacques um a couple things for our listeners that don't know what a ts is what is that a ts is it um <laughs> the technical specialist there you go there you go i was going to help you there for a second but where, <laughs> where where are you in the in the in the story for the customer you like come in at the beginning or Oh, technical blockers or so I, I I I'm attached to the TSS. Okay. So when the technical specialists have done whatever they had to do, and then um, there's maybe a configuration error or whatever like that, they bring me on board for two things. One, um, a hack went through mm -hmm. after they tested, um, even was a testing hack, or um, they have a broker that say this technology that we said it's not going to work. How do we test it? Um, that actually do say what Microsoft is saying. So they, we take away the smoke and mirrors that say we don't do smoke and mirrors, we will test it. Um, the, the what, what I call the proof is in the pudding. So if they want to test something, then I, I do a workshop and then they tell me this is the three things we want to test and we will run those three things to make sure they're happy with what they want to purchase. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you, you, yeah, real quick, you mentioned the other thing. I, I think this is kind of interesting. You've been hacking since you were 11. What did you hack? What's the story there? What did you well, hack? I didn't know it was hacking um, <clears throat> because I'm from South Africa. 
So in South Africa, the biggest expensive thing that you can get is internet. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea, we have, I have a, a, a gig internet line here in my house for 400 and something dollars. In South Africa, this is an $8,000 rent, right? So you don't have easily a one gig at home. This is more of an enterprise solution in South Africa. I believe it's the third highest cost in a company or fourth oh, highest wow. cost. So back in that, those days, it was just a couple of companies that really had it. And I was um, I was basically assisting in a computer shop that was called Solomon Systems. And they provided internet to businesses. And they had all these modem banks back in the day. One, <laughs> modem, one modem and then you go in and so forth. So I was just going in and cleaning machines and stuff because I was I come from a farm. So I was intrigued. I was not a farm dude. Look at me. I'm not bull for all you. <laughs> you know? So my mom was always driving to town and I was always like, because I played t games and Sega and stuff back in the day. So I was like, my brother is, right? So I went in and I was always cleaning computers and I was seeing this guy doing some stuff on Linux. And I was like, what is, what are you doing? And he was like, he was much older than I was. So it was, it was his company. His name was Solomon. So he said, no, this is what I'm doing. He started to teach me. And after like three years there, he started to trust me. So I started to build like, ID, we build it on Linux, uh, so the guy can log in, and he showed me some hacking stuff. I didn't know it was hacking at the time, and then what we did some play, so he gave us an IP address with a file, and we have to like log in at home and try and guess the, the passwords and go in, and then after the movie, 1995 Hackers, Great movie. I realized Great movie. what actually I was doing, yeah. and that's kind of what intrigued me was um now there was something that happened before that which i'm not going to talk about because <laughs> uh, uh, i was i was caught um <clears throat> so um but it was very interesting i then actually could put two two together what what i was doing uh back then um yeah so that's kind Great of story. yeah that's pretty neat <clears throat> so what do you spend most of your time in what particular technology i mean because you said threat and the threats of all types. What, what do you I, and Linux notwithstanding, because you you're a Linux guru. What else do you spend most of your time in? If you have name uh, vendor products, um, it will definitely be um, the software where people will use to test. For instance, Red Canary, Caldera, all those type of um, um, the testing software, and trying to figure out. If somebody wants to test something, do they actually know what they're testing and do they actually know what the result they're looking for? Because what I start to see with customers lately is they go in, <clears throat> they do a test, they come out and say, oh, Microsoft didn't catch it. But was it actually doing something bad or didn't you enable something in the under layer while we didn't catch it? And <clears throat> that happens across the board. That happens with Mac, it happens with Linux, all that kind of things. So a lot of guys, so I was an FSI most of the time, FSI, mm -hmm. and I actually had a red team. They could afford a red team. A lot of our commercial customers and stuff can't do it to have somebody coming in, they do a few testings, and they go out. These guys do not communicate to the desktop people. They don't communicate. They're coming in to do something specifically. So what I try to figure out is if you can use a program like Caldera or Red Canaries, do you actually know what you're going to do? What is the, what is the aim? Um, are you going to test it because you want to see, can Microsoft catch it? That is called a, a testing. Do you want to see if you enabled something that that thing is enabled? That's something else. And how do you, if you want to do something with the team to say, listen, we do require this technology. Here is the test. Here is the result. And this is what we need it. That's something else. So you've got three things that you always need to uh, worry about or think about before you just jump and get a program. The fourth thing is, do you know what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you try something and you get an answer and you think it's the right thing or, the, or, or sometimes you get the wrong thing, but you don't know how to get to that. That's kind of what I mean. They will say, listen, we did this. We get it in our sock, but we don't know how and where it should be. But in there, there's always something in there that tells you you didn't enable something or, oh, wait a minute, the support open on the on the switch or a hub or whatever like that, depending on what they want to do. 
and you start to get this thing called hybrid world, hybrid world right? We've got some stuff on premise and in a cloud. And a lot of people are scared to basically move into the cloud because there's some theories around that you can't protect it. And this is kind of where it comes in. How do we protect stuff that goes in, uh, into the cloud? 90% it's more what we protect on premise before it goes to the cloud. There's billions of dollars spending in the cloud. For somebody to hack in the cloud, you have to know your stuff because then it's actually the wrong configuration. Mm -hmm. So before I even start a hack, we look at configuration and we do one thing at a time. Um, a lot of guys like to go what we call Holy Mary. They just press a thing and it goes does 20 things at a time. And then as an ah bypassed or whatever, you, that's mm -hmm. not testing. Testing can mm -hmm. take a while. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly where you fit and you seem like one of these consultants. And I, you, you seem like you a blend of, are you familiar with Microsoft's dark team? I'm sure you are. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like you do that. And then now you one of the Microsoft threat experts. If you're doing that, then you're also a pen tester. So, um, you know, when do you sleep? <laughs> so, so sorry, you just broke up there. I said, when do you when do you have time to, to, to sleep? <laughs> it's like you got a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so I mentioned I've, I have autism, so I sleep three to four hours a day. How many? Three, three to four. To four. Right, yeah. And then I do like 20 minute breaks sometimes during the day. So, um, you know, so some reason I could just put, for last 16 years, um, just put my head down, sleep 20 minutes of power break. They actually only found out 14 years ago I'm autistic. Funny thing, I was at 17 psychiatrists and six neuro professors, and the guy that found it out was Microsoft. He was my ex boss. He found out that I had autism. He, you, do, you don't just go and you have autism. You go through the three-year um, testing before you get your car to say you're autistic. So I'm highly functioned, but I couldn't look into your face and stuff like that. It was always the dude in the corner. Um, leave me alone. I'm just doing my thing. So for nine years, I wasn't close. It's hard to um, do this, hard to mm -hmm. interact, because I can't see body language. So for me, when everybody had masks on, it was extremely hard because oh, I had to yeah. look at one in language to see um, what I'm saying and do you understand what I'm saying. So I, had to I remember imagine. you telling this story when I joined Microsoft Shock. You were doing an internal, an internal demonstration of something similar to what you're going to be showing us today. And you talked about how great that leader was in your world because he was able to help you get the support you needed to, you know enable you to be the best shock you could be, right? And that's a really cool story for a leader in the organization to be able to help you no, out that way. It's a good story for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Microsoft as a company actually helped. A, a guy saw it and he helped me and a leader in Microsoft helped me. Okay, that's a rare. But it's also rare for a company to keep you employed and keep giving you challenges and uh, kind of give me freedom. So hence this role I'm doing is not on a global, it's mm. specifically designed for Canada, purely because I can't do all the other things. My brain is designed for, well, mm. for a certain thing and thread is my thing. Mm. So um, they redesigned this role for me. So it went all the way up to, at that time, it became basically, yeah, he, in, in, he signed it off. So this mm -hmm. is my boss is uh, Kevin McGee, then it goes to Jordan Sheridan, and then from then it goes to Pisco. That's cool. Well, sir, we are at the half hour mark, and I know you got something you want to show our watchers slash listeners. So I don't know who has to give you control to share, but I'd love to see what you what you you brought to our listeners and watchers today. Uh, I think I just believe I just go and I say share it, right, share my screen. Yeah, sounds about right. Thanks, sir. Uh, I think the national cybersecurity expert can can share his screen. He's probably got that. Seems too easy. There we go. Okay. What a great slide, Jacques. Look at that. You look bossed. <laughs> I don't do, I don't like slides. It's uh, the most boring thing for me to do. So I just have twelve. Um, so what I wanted to just quickly go over is one. We're going to talk uh, slightly about just what did I learn. Uh, what I learned from customers using GitHub, 
because I mean everybody is kind of we own it, so we have insights in it. How do we adapt using a live environment? So how do our customers can actually go in and test, right, and get the right results? Uh, what is the bigger picture, and then the teamwork? So just have to say it again. I have autism. I need to say it. So if I do something, say it's offensive or something like that, or you don't understand. Please, guys, just stop me and say, what do you mean? And if I do say something that uh, it's offensive, I do apologize in advance. Um, okay, so what did I learn? Um, one of the biggest, coolest things is HDB Academy. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, they hack the box in uh, .eu in, U in the UK. allows you to actually go in and play with stuff and go and get in trouble. So they have all these things that you can do. They actually have two sites there. They have, and this is not a paid thing at all. This is just something I discovered over my time playing around. The one is Academy. You can go and learn stuff. And one is they give you all these life environments and teams that don't have, or companies that don't have any red teams. They can every Friday assign a team, go in there and try to hack whatever they give you. So one, it's not on your network. Two, whatever files that you're running can't damage your program or your systems. Three, it's in a virtual environment. Four, if you run a ransomware, it just attacks that system. But how does it look like? How does it work? And it gives you the ability of a real-life environment or real-life hack. And this is what I like about it. Because we all can go to YouTube, and there's a lot of smoke and mirrors on YouTube, so be, be careful. If it's, got technic, uh, if it's got techno music, go away. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's always something that turns off or look, this is our hack windows or whatever operating system. And it's always like, and you're like no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not how you do it. You turn something off. Okay. So here, obviously, something is turned off. But here it shows you the hack. Okay. Uh, you can't go to war if you've never been in there. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. So if you see it, you run it, you're familiar with it. You can see where it's going to happen in your organization. You can start to see steps. Okay, so that's what I like about it. The second part is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Secure. Yeah. Secure is one of the only companies with Polis Savanskovich that actually have internal code of Microsoft Windows. And they test our stuff and they have like forensic stuff and so social engineering and the mastery. I went and go and studied it. That's something I did out of my own pocket, go and study it. Because they, they've got a lot of things there. But that's something that I wanted to do. Forensic and Prevention Mastery course. I actually enjoyed it. It was a very good course. And it allowed me to understand how the layers of Windows Server and mm. Windows was working. Technically, it works like an app. You've got the core and then everything built on top of that. If you start to understand how the layers of the operating system works, then you can start to see how you can prevent attacking. And um, that's kind of what I loved about them is because they were really specifically going to the layers and they, they basically broke it up for you. And then if you want to tap this, this is what I, this is what Microsoft uh, Windows are faking, like the LSAS and all those kind of things. So you start to learn it. Keep in mind, hackers also go and learn it. So when they want to go and attack, they can also go in here, say they're from this company, but learn how to hack it. And that's why it's so important to understand it because we, do something that nobody else does, and that is behavior detection. And that's what you need to learn. You need to learn your behavior detection in organization. Yeah, and behavior. Yeah. Be behavior because your weakest points are yeah. either knowing what your baselines are or in users. That's right? correct. Yeah. yeah. So what I learned from customers using GitHub is this is kind of the most amount of customers. And I'm talking about Canada, yeah? They use Atomic Red Canary, Caldera, known before, or Straight Connection, uh, Free Connect. Okay, so there's, there's, there's plenty. There's Purple Sharp. There is, I mean, there is so much typical hacking software that you can use to that. There's two things the guys need to understand. One, when you use hacking software, the software is not going through a kill chain, okay? It bypasses the user trying to hack you by sending an email and where Microsoft will catch you maybe there, and then it goes to the next and next and next chain. So it does not follow a kill chain. So please, when you do use these things, you need to consider the hacker is on the machine and then from there go out. 
because the directory that you install the files in has already been in um, MDE. It's already been approved. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't run it and think it was been bypassed. Oh, okay. Well, the hacker got whatever it is. That's one thing you need to understand. It's not true. Okay. Second thing you need to understand is depending what you use. Okay. So if you're going to use Goldera, for instance, it installs a program, it runs a memory, and then it does its thing. Okay. The rest does exactly the same. The only program that does not do it is Atomic Red Canary. They basically just throw a bunch of files in a directory. Then you execute it, and then it's doing the catch. Okay. So there's nothing in memory that is pre-approved. So um, it's a more... For me, that the testings I've done, I get a more accurate reading in my SOC and a more accurate reading into what I want to test. If it's a functionality, if it's a hack or whatever like that, I get a more. And I'm going to showcase basically one of, one of those and how you're going to basically test it. So if there's any other programs out there that people will be more than welcome to let me know. I'm no um, guided, so you're not allowed to use this or this, this. It's just if you do use it, understand the limit the limitations to it and also understand what you're testing and what you're testing okay also uh big shout out to red canary guest of the show be back friend on next show. month friend yeah. of the show they'll be back next month and uh I'm, I'm one of the things i'm going to ping them on is that workbook that uh rod showed us either brody showed us so i want to i want to make sure they talk about that so yeah. uh, it sounds like red canary is uh one of your faves in your toolbox uh, Tom and Red team in particular. Uh, yes. I I know of no before. I mean, when they came around, uh, Kadero, yes. I, I, I don't remember Threat Connect. Um, Threat Connect is very much the same way it installs a agent on the machine and I just do certain things, right? Certain things. What I like about the Red Canary um, and um, Caldera, they're very much attached to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Mm -hmm. So if you want to run T1003 or T1105 or whatever like that, it's going to go through those steps exactly like a MITRE ATT&CK framework because that's the hacker's Bible. I mean, they're going to go through steps, right? The kill chain to get what they're looking for. And that's what I like about them. If you want to test the T1003, you type in test da, 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 and then you go and you do your testing. Um, and that's what I like about it. And I don't know if you guys know this. Now, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. No, I think I can say this. Do you know who actually built the Atomic Red the Red? So you know that there's two versions of the Atomic Red Canary. There's the one that's the hacking portion of it, which is this bit, and then there's the Threat Experts version. Mm -hmm. When they connect to the MD Threat Expert, mm -hmm. help you. Do you know who builds the Atomic Red Canary? Who actually started building that was... Um, them with Walmart. Yeah. Walmart has more than 500, I believe, on a correction, Red Team members, and they actually build, build it, help or help develop it, and then mm -hmm. you can contribute. So that's kind of how this whole thing started. Rick, Rick and Eric came on explaining the both sides of it, where they do the XDR, threat management, threat expert stuff, and then they talked about the ART that came on. I I think we had an ART on. Or was it just Ray Canary? Yeah, we've had both sides on, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's good stuff. I like it. Um, I, I'm, I'm, um, Ray Canary's even said that some they've been approached by certain users to say, hey, we heard about your product on the podcast. Good stuff. So I'm a fan. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. What? Yeah, a little bit off topic. What What part of Canada are you in? Calgary. Oh. Calgary. Okay. Yeah. So were you at the cow punching event last week? With Cal, Cal Stampede. Stampede, there you go. Stampede. I just, went, um, I just watched, we went to the, because uh, they actually go past the um, uh, offices, our satellite office. Yeah, they have a parade. They have a parade at the start, and then we hosted yeah. a, a pancake breakfast at, at 7.30 in the morning, which I'm not going to. Yeah, we had to be for. there, like, in trying to wake up your five-year daughter. It's like waking up a hurricane in your house. <laughs> um, don't understand why we need to stand, stand up that early to go and watch them. Yeah. I just went to go and watch Kevin Costner, and then it was done. I want to go home afterwards. <laughs> there you go. And uh, so, before I'm carrying on, let's do a slight little demo because I think we 
spend way too much time on the on the okay so this is a machine and I'm, I'm emphasizing this i do not rdp into this machines or any of this machines at all i actually have a a, a graphics connector card which captures and brings it in <laughs> mm -hmm. i have two internet lines i've got one for my work and one for testing okay i do not cross them there's no switches between <clears> them nothing because i'm on a corp of microsoft i'm not allowed when we run these tests all of customers that we are on a non-secure line okay so this is a secure line that we are testing on so i'm gonna quickly go in and show you something so what are we going to test in this one is credential guard is something that is um that everybody want to steal is, is credit but people think a credential card is only something that is in um for your credentials and stuff like that that's in the system for passwords you could be that's actually wrong so if you go in and you go to um uh Let's go and check over here and how to do it and test it correctly. First of all, you want to go in and you want to go and download DG region, DG. Uh, where is it? That one. DG readiness toolkit. So what it will do is it will go and actually see in the hardware layer of the firmware if TPM is actually enabled. Okay, a lot of times. Because we have a, in our customers, we have $200 notebooks, we have $500, we have got a $1,000 notebook, they all use different TPMs, okay? And sometimes what happens is as soon when you assume that particular range TPM is available and is using, most of the time we also sometimes detect it's not, okay? It says it is, but as soon when you go into the physical firmware, it's not enabled. What this allows you to do is it's a Microsoft program, it actually flashes it, put another code into it. Well, it's not really flashing it, but it's just adding a code to it, which it then sends it to MDE, so we can then detect if somebody's trying to hack the firmware, okay? okay. So what you then do is you just go in, you say, um, uh, let's go in and say, <clears throat> terminal, Okay, and then when you say DG, and then you just start ready. What it will do is uh, it will read it. So I said read, sorry, no, I said I do run. Um, Tiny. Sorry, read G, there we go, and it says run. And after it runs, it's going to tell you, oh, of course. Let's just do that again. Script execution. Classic. Just run it as uh, administrator. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I PowerShell. Mm -hmm. oh, Hotmail.com, a man of character. Josh, love it. Back in the days, man. <laughs> Back in the days, yeah. Okay, DG. Okay, so you're running the DG readiness utility, yeah. PowerShell script. So it instantly tells me there I am running credential code, it's enabled. I am running HVCI. That's very important to understand. Do you guys know what is HVCI? You want to give it a bash? Hardware virtual controller interface. Yeah, almost ready. Hyper V. Oh, right. I don't know okay. if you guys know this, but Hyper-V is the only one, and I'm saying the only one that injects the actual code of the password into the TPM processor. No other program does it. You can go and test it. You can sometimes grab the passwords before they actually get into injected. So um, I'm talking specifically on Surface devices. Okay. So there is things that you can grab before it actually gets injected into the processor. Um, we can we can on a later stage chat about it. I can show you how to grab that um, before it actually gets running in. So that's the one, and then it tells you we are running all of it. Now let's say, for instance, you didn't know if you're running it. You can then say if if is the machine compatible of running it. 
you can then say compatible and then it's going to check if it's running and there it tells you exactly we have to reboot blah 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 but it gives you if it's capable of running it and stuff like that okay so you can actually run this program to see is it capable of actually enabling all of these functionalities some of them can only enable the actual tpm process to produce a post injection but not the hvci it depends on this on the chipset that you're running of the tpm okay so after that's done this machine we know it's a surface machine it can run all of them baskets are protected everything is done but how do we really know it's protected okay so therefore we then going to run terminal and then we're going to run um partial then what we're going to do is because it doesn't invoke it we're just going to run invocation so we just force um uh we just force it we say invoke atomic and then we see what test are we want to run so you can t1003 and then this is quite cool um read the documentation but if i want to show what is the details or a brief i can then type it in it's going to tell me there's three tests that we can run we can run a gse dump we can run a credential a dumping with npp spy we can run a dump with exe go with rdp credentials now if you're locked into this machine by rdp and lock out of the machine do the dumping test because then we can see if the actual password is from windows version built 2004 windows 10 we actually sent it down to the tpm processor okay so windows 11 even go one step further they do something called cred guard which is actually going and splitting your websites and splitting the machine certs into two sets uh, separate virtual instances in the LDAP. Now I'm getting very technical, but I can show you how that works in a later stage because don't confuse websites passwords with certs and stuff from like Teams, Office 365 and stuff like that. They're completely separate. So if a hacker wants to grab passwords from the website versus the actual um, like server passwords, it's two different places to go. And we fake them. Okay. Oh. Oh. It's, it's not, there's no real LDAP. We fake them, I'll, but after there's an architecture after show. Okay, so let's say we want to use dash two. Okay, so what is dash two going to do? So we're going to go in and we're going to say uh, dash two, and then back again. We say what is the the brief um, of it's going to do? Uh, sorry, not the brief. Show details. So what it's going to do is it's basically going to run a uh, well, that's a cleanup command. It's going to run, it's going to grab the file, it's then going to grab the password out of the TPM processor, at the dump, so that you can go into another machine that's got no security and run Memicats and get the hash or the passwords out of the machine. Okay? okay? So that's going to be a Windows like XP machine or whatever running in the background that has no security. So what we then do is... There was no security in Windows XP? Really? Uh, it's not it, so I can say, yeah, you can manipulate it. Okay. It's improved. It's improved since XP. Got it, Chuck. Yeah. You see Windows XP blue screened on all of the international terminal uh, computers still. Yeah. yeah. So instantly you see there, it's denied because of the stuff. But is it denied? So the only way we can see that is now we log into. And Jock, you got the deny because TPM was enabled, and that's why that particular test was unable to pull yes. the password. Okay, yeah. So and this is coming right from Atomic Red Team's testing library. Everybody following along. That's correct. So if you go into your investigations, okay. So this is MDE. So this is our Microsoft uh, 365 Defender. And if you go in here, you go to device inventory. You can pick up Surface Book Two. Uh, there we go and instantly you're going to see under alerts it picked it up okay and it stopped it so that uh, attack never um never took place in terms it, it stopped it but it resolved the actual attack and it tells you where the attack was happening 
uh, from discovery to execution, what's the malware, the path, the execution again, and so forth. Now we can go in here and we can go and spend quite a few time what it was. Now, what you need to understand is once you run this, a lot of guys will say, how do we know it was a credential dump? Okay. And this is why you need to basically click all of them and create a, a, a thing that says, this is our, this is credential dumping. And then go through all of it step by step to make sure what machine, what it was, what was it running, what was up, what did it send something out and so forth. This is where kind of advanced hunting is starting to come in. What the hackers like to do is, what I like about Red Canary is they use what we call an obs observation attack. This is not the attack that they use is lots of them. Okay, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to make the sock go round and detect all sorts of things to take you away from what was actually happening. Mm. So um, that's kind of what it was. So yes, we did pick it up. It's a suspicious process discovery that was doing and stuff like that. Keep in mind a pro a suspicious process. Okay, now I'm going to tell you. Just stop at that portion. Let's go to what happened with another customer. Another customer had a program running, which was not, a, was an in-house build program. Classic. Yeah. So it wasn't a program we bought from a, it was an in-house build. It was a FSI. It was a banking application. MDE saw that as a suspicious activity. So the customer came in to me and says, hey, MDE is actually telling us it is, uh, um, uh, it's not really detecting it. So that is false and positives and stuff like that. That's not the case. What you need to do is, is click on it, go and see what it's doing, and then you as a company need to say, oh, put it as a suppression rule or leave that in my archives that it's not a suppression tool. When it says it's doing something bad, I locked into the machine. It's seeing a jock is locked into the machine. I run it on the machine. Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a suspicious activity, but it's still me logging in, so it's still checking. Then when I ran to grab it, then it stopped it. Then it says, oh, okay, well, I know what you're doing. So a lot of guys will say, okay, well, you really run it, so you are kind of ready into the machine. And that's when the whole kill chain starting and starting to get into place. Um, if you want a, a real pen tester, you're going to spend a few hundred thousand dollars, and they're going to try, they're going to get an IP address, they're going to check the ports, they're going to scan the ports, then they're going to try and log in. It takes hours. It's not a movie here where you watch and you see in 10 minutes somebody just hacked the machine and they have a password. Yeah, it's got to run tech. overnight. Yeah. And that's where the whole Microsoft ecosystem gets into play. Here. Identity, RDE, um, well, files and checking. Um, I mean, I, we can go for hours on you. What is what is ticking? So that's what I'm saying. I'm just going to stop right there because what it's happening is, is that you need to make sure as a company, what you're testing, how you're testing it, like that big thing that i can tell you is a lot of companies do not know they have e3 they have enterprise windows but they don't enable e3 and if you really go and check the list of e3 there's definitely three of them that you need to enable credential guard protecting of the web browser mm -hmm. okay so if you don't whitelist something in an organization and it goes out of it, let Edge start up in a virtual instance. Okay? Right. Isolation, so, browser isolation. Yeah. Browser. You know how many times that have saved companies? Because when the hack goes down or a virus or whatever, they download it by accident of human, it goes and sits in a pocket. It doesn't sit in the memory. It doesn't go in the memory. It's like a virtual machine. When you click and you delete mm -hmm. the virtual machine, well, the browser, it kills it. It never touches the layer. Okay. The fourth, the fourth thing that I also need to understand is how um, application guard is working. What applications and stuff like that, because that will determine, is it a real EXE that's running? Is it, is my WinRAR or WinZAR I'm, I'm downloading? Was my gate my gateway not poisoned? So it's grabbing it from a local and then sending it out, because I don't know how long your cache is sitting. A lot of companies say 30 days, and after that, nobody downloads it, delete it from cache. Next time I click on one, I'm using WinRAR as an example here, guys. Not, but easy to pick on WinRAR. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever bought WinRAR? That's a joke. That's an internet joke. Everybody uses <laughs> the trial on WinRAR and they keep hitting the trial button. But yeah, we're, I'm following Jacques. Is Application Guard another crucial thing to have enabled yeah. on the endpoint for Windows? Yeah. 
yeah, because it goes and check the certifications and stuff like that. And what, what we've noticed, what we've done on Windows 11 is, if you click on it and go and download, it doesn't go and download from 192.678 or whatever like that. And actually, mm. the URL, it will tell you this is this is on my network. This is where Hack5 devices come in. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Hack5. We see a lot of Hack5 devices coming, and I can show you some very cool hacks on Hack5. How you can bypass the firewall like this. I, I will I will be in and out of your network, but never ever touch a firewall, never. And that's what we start to see now. We're picking up about 12, between six and 12 hack five devices and customers per month. It uh, it's, it's just people over. going, plugging them into an ethernet port somewhere and just leaving them behind a desk basically. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've heard of those. The ones we pick up the most is called the Lanteral because okay. it uses a LTE card. Right, because then that's uh, their way out, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Battery, plug it in, or just a port, RJ45 on a network, the neck doesn't detect it, and it's, there we go, complete hacking device behind the network. Bypass all firewalls, and I can now have access, and then I could see two cloud services. So I install whatever I want to, download it there, and then I start to spread it out onto the network. Um, I can show you how that works because I have a whole setup here with, which I did for a customer to show them that you can detect them. And uh, we built actually a detection tool in, in the in advance hunting that if something goes into the network and it's doing something behaviorally incorrectly, it needs to detect the IP address or something it connects to because it will always connect and talk to something. And um, which comes to the next one that I've just built now, which is called the key crock. The key crock is something they installed between a keyboard, it's a key logger, between a keyboard yeah. and the PC. <laughs> and we start to see them and funny enough, because <laughs> people didn't go in they were from home. A lot of people were starting to get, uh, I need to go out, all right? So they go to um, coffee shops. And then they had key loggers on the network, like that. And then yeah, you type in your passwords, whatever to log into your corporate, they grab it. And then um, they follow you and all that kind of thing. So, so how do we Chuck, do it sounds like you're a big proponent of the of the built-in Windows security functionality, App Guard, Credential Guard. Um, there's the other one you mentioned there. So these are no-brainers in your opinion that everybody running enterprise Windows endpoint should be enabling no matter what. Like it's no brainer. At least those three, at least Credential Guard is number one. Your 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 before all of them is MFA. Okay. Yes. MFA. Yes. Yeah, classic. From a Windows perspective, those are the three that I see E5 will detect. Because remember, that's not those three functionalities not part of E5. E5 is the, the MDE stuff and uh, identity. E3 is to help Windows detecting. Otherwise, you just have a vanilla Windows with an enterprise password and an mm -hmm. ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, cool. so that's kind of what I see as you can go further. It becomes slightly more complicated if you go further because then you have to um, check, check it out. So what we do is we go to organization. We say take a notebook from each division, one notebook from each division. That's a HR, IT, Salesforce, whatever like that. Test um, credential card because it might change the behavior of how the passwords are working. And then before you do a rollout, if you just do a rollout blind, you can you can hold the company. So you, that's how you do it. You basically take each and and sometimes also if you have an HP or a Dell and something like that, test all of them because you need to make sure that all of them are. Who's the most important person of the organization? Uh, probably the executive assistant. I was going to say the same the thing. The chief of staff. Reception. 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 Yeah, the gatekeeper. Yeah, the gatekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> Good so call. They have the least expensive PC in the organization. Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah. And they have the most access. Oh, yeah. They have the most access and they have the least expensive PC. They should have like the most expensive TPM version. If you want to go and check out ETPMs, make sure it's the Israeli code. Uh, just a fun fact all surface devices. From the cheapest to the expensive, use the highest top of TPM process. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Mm. All okay. It's all Israeli code in that in, in the TPM. I'm only talking about our product because I 
have insights on it, so I can. I can't talk about other companies' products. Should I have? I just don't know which one of them because they, there's so many of them, different ones. So from a service device, they have top-notch TPM processing power. Now, um, if you want to go and check. Hey, Jack, while you're, while you're pulling it up, we do have a question from yes. a listener here. They're starting to implement or creating a project for implementing zero trust with Credential Guard. And they're just asking if maybe you have any tips or resources where they can go look this up, potentially. If you don't, that's okay. We can kind of research it and hand them that a little bit later. Yes, before you do anything like that, MFA first, all those machines. <clears throat> because for some reason, hackers have the potential of knowing when you do stuff like that. It's the weirdest thing, but they know when you sometimes implement stuff. Secondly, is before you enable credential card, enable your, uh, sorry, your, uh, you see conditional access? Yep. MFA. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Enable credential card first on those machines that you're running, then you do conditional access. Because you want the passwords of conditional access and stuff that's moving around to be injected into the TPM processor. I don't know if you guys know this, but the TPM pr pr processor has been actually since 2003. There's version 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.1, and then it goes higher. That is, I think there's three versions. It's never been hacked, ever. Really? The TPM has never been hacked. There's only two people in the world that could have done it, but they didn't hack it physically. They took it out and they plugged in like they were like <laughs> rainy people that's got like they physically had to solder and they looked right. at waves and stuff. A very low level attack on the hardware itself. You're yeah, okay. not going, me and you, if you listen, if you want to go that far, go in here. <laughs> You've given the North Koreans a, a new goal. Yeah, no doubt. Sure, those people get paid, Jacques. Those people get paid. Yeah. Okay, well, so, when someone gets but, access to your physical machine, you, yeah. Now yeah. they got time and motivation, especially if they can keep it off the internet, so you can't remote wipe it or lock it down. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Even with BitLocker, I mean, everything's fair game until it's not. So yeah. when gets there's access there's to your stuff for that. There's like it's called you the paid attack or something. Is, you know what else is almost like impossible to hack is is is, is passwordless. Mm -hmm. Passwordless password is possible to hack. Impossible. There's no password. Yeah, that's fair. Recognition going directly to the TPM or YubiKey. Ding ding done in no password. It's all done by a, a code that you cannot you cannot um you can't hack it. Anything over a certain amount of characters can take you thousands of years. Like if you have a 21 character code, whatever like that, nobody can run a brute force attacker on that. There's no GPU power out there that can run it. There's two companies in the world that can do that. It's Pixel Studios because they have all that for Farm. things. Nobody's got access to that. And there was another, I can't say the country, um, but they have a machine that can um, determine physics. So if something goes to the wall, what is the impact going to be? And it takes billions of calculations. Um, and I use it normally for aerodynamics and stuff like that and aircraft mm -hmm. and all that kind of things. They're the only company that basically have the potential power of password on GPU power. We're talking about they have thousands of GPUs, rows and rows and rows that does that calculation. Jacking up the prices with the crypto miners. Unless somebody has a quantum computer, Jacques, that we're not aware of a government that might be crushing hey. all of our encryption standards right now. Edward, what, what do you want to add to that? I I have a quantum computer that lives with me because she claims she knows everything. So, <laughs> I got, oh, that's I, yeah. I've got one of those too, Ed. Yeah, yeah, I've got one yeah. of those too. Yeah. Actually, She's already in the house. I just want to check. Yeah, yeah. I have one too. You got one too, Jacques? You got one too? Yeah. Just, just roll with it. Just roll with it. Well, you've yeah, outlined a lot of things watching this. on the endpoint, Jacques, that, that need to be enabled in order to protect against malicious activity. And, and, and are we at time, by the way? Can Jacques show more stuff, or are we, are we done at the top of the hour here? Well, we we have a, a few more minutes. So, yeah, if Jacques has something okay. else, we need to get into a couple yeah. of minutes. Yeah. The last thing that I just want to talk about is um, uh, I just want to bring this up. Oh, no, 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 not that one. And Jacques, it just feels like we got to have you on again, by the way, because you're a wealth of knowledge. So I'm sure there's only so much you can show in a 40-minute window here, and this is very, very interesting. So we'll have to have you back on for more. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, um, I, I enjoy this type of thing. So if you want to go down to your Windows, for instance, and you type in cred manager, for instance, okay? So, um, okay, so I'm going to do just, uh, come on. Or just for, cred. Uh, you can type in cred. Right, um, right, come on. Yeah, cred, there we go, cred manager. <laughs> you will see uh, that when you, that's when really I told you guys it's broken in two. So that's cred manager. And that is the Windows Manager. So anything that's Windows related, like my password, for instance, it's modified. You can't see the password. See, because that's in a TPM processor. If you go to a web credentials, and you want to, for instance, check that. You see, you can see show. Then it's going to do RS recognition and stuff like that. That's the difference between websites and when you actually have like Teams or Windows or something is running. Once you see all of this are running, is this is stuff that's actually going in caches in the TPM processor itself. That's that's another indication that you have it on. If you want to do a quick way of checking in, then you can just go down to the bottom over here, type, type and run. Mm -hmm. And you're on an MS Info32. And if you go right down to the bottom, you can start to see what after um, in, uh, DMA protection, you can see what is enabled in your organization and what is not, the values that's enabled. And you can see um, by security is enabled, all that kind of things is enabled. Now, there is tools that you can run. So, for instance, funny enough, in Windows Pro, you can enable those functionalities as well. They're okay? not just enterprise. So if you go to GitHub and you want to download a tool that can help you, especially when you run, and that's another thing that we can talk about. Another thing is ASR rules. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go in and run the EXE of to harden your windows. And if I'm going to say mm -hmm. yes, um, and I want to run it. And you've got in your MDE lab, Jacques, you've got full auto remediation turned on for this machine. So it's doing the full remediation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. As opposed to semi or off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what you can do is you can go in here and you can say, uh, hold on all uh, default settings. Look what it's doing is it's actually go in and it's going to harden this machine till the team. Okay. And it's going to check especially for offers. Mm. Uh, it's going to PowerShell, all that kind of things. Now, when you enable this PowerShell functionality, be careful. You cannot go into PowerShell at all as a local user, even if you have local administrative rights. The only machine that allows you to do this is Windows 10. If you have Windows 11, this functionality is gone. So if you run it, be careful. If you have Windows 10 and you do this, anything to do PowerShell, it's gone. You can't, you can't log into it. Okay. Mm. Yes. Makes sense. Uh, I guess humans are the greatest risk to computers, eh? Correct. Yeah. So we can yeah. get away when it's living. Because the, um, that's one thing. So there we go. That's a success. This machine is now hard, and you can see what it's doing. UAE, file associations, Windows ASR rules, uh, PUA protection. We can go into another section what those PIU protection is, because that is actually very interesting how you can bypass that or hack that. Another thing is, if you start off, is try to download uh, something called the uh, baseline security. Mm -hmm. So uh, Windows 11 have a baseline security that you can enable, and that will enable all Windows E3 functionalities. Now, I will rather tell, go to MDE mm -hmm. or System Center or Intune to do this. Okay, yeah. this if you want to do is if you want to actually harden a machine that's a not a production machine, it's a machine in your network that you want to see what and how deep you can actually connect. You have a machine in a corner where IT can work on install that programs and see what you can because it's going to uh, it's going to enable a lot of things. This is almost like when you broke all your bones in your body and you go to the doctor and the doctor <laughs> is broken, you tell him rather what is not broken. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair. Fair. There you uh, go. Like everything. Okay. Jock, then it works this, well. This, so, this is cool. This is cool, man. This is, Jock, did, did you? Okay. Okay. We always like to tie back our reactor episodes, especially to education and certification. So you've been hacking since you were a, a young lad. Um, I assume you have a bunch of non Microsoft 
offensive security certifications as well as Microsoft secu security certifications. You, you want to talk briefly about that before we tell everybody about our learning opportunity for yeah, this episode? Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, great. YouTube. Okay. That's what yeah, my second like person. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but you did say, yeah. be careful I, with YouTube. If you hear techno pop, go to the next one. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, YouTube has got an algorithm, right? If you show something of any program, uh, Linux, uh, anything that's licensed like Microsoft, and you are a guy that's actually showing it, they will remove your video. So what they guys are doing is they break it up into three or four videos. They'll show a code and they will break it here, and they will show a video one or four. But if you type, if you time them correctly, you can see the whole map. Ah, yeah. hilarious! That's how they get around. They'll the past that. Okay. Uh, on a serious note, what I studied was offensive security. Um, mm -hmm. I did mine in Norway. It was still, it was eight years ago. You had to fly in. You couldn't do it online. So I was back in the days, I flight to more Oslo. More Don't secure. Go in the it is horrible. Um, you do a 24 hour, um, you sit in the room and you do a 24 hour hack. Um, these days it's different. These days you can do it by online and stuff like that. The reason I want you to get something like that, if you buy any hack five or any hacking software, depending on what state you are in, it could be illegal. Okay. Mm -hmm. so be careful when guys are just plugging stuff in and out. If you're in certain places in the US or certain places in 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 in, 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 in um, um, the world it can be considered as uh, illegal activity because remember windows is still running in the back end via dart team okay so if you do something that you're not supposed to do they will still act on the machine to, to fix it right so that's why i'm saying go to a, a website like hackthebox.eu run stuff on there because it's built for it they destroy it the next day they're running and it's nothing touching yet okay? If you want to go and study something like this, or this, there's a vast world of security. Do something you love. We, we've not even started at Wi-Fi hacking, how easy that is. Because there's a radio problem that you can actually bypass. So it a quick way to get a password. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not brute force. It's actually the device that's giving it to you. Because there's a problem. There's a... Uh, there's, Anyway, Jock, one... Jock, how many times has Microsoft Security contacted you for uh, testing on your endpoint? Talking about Sila. Sila, yes. You got some Sila emails? Uh, I just know that they know me by my son. <laughs> and that's not because it's something. something they just, they yeah. just keep seeing you on everything. Yeah. I, I got yeah. a Sila email accidentally. I downloaded yeah. Mimi Cats because I wanted to move it over into my Azure nested uh, VM environment to ping a bunch of MDI mm -hmm. stuff. And it was like a red bang email, copies my manager. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please don't fire me. And I talked to Jacques months ago and he's like, I've got an automatic rule in my inbox for Sila emails because I get so many of them. Nah. Yeah. Um, I have a workaround for that, by the way, Brody, in case you want to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank also, you uh, I believe it's a fireable offense now. I could see that. Yeah, it could, it could be that. Mm -hmm. no, no. Um, hey, hey, Jacques, have you taken the SC100 the, that just came out of beta, the um, cybersecurity expert certification for Microsoft? Do you even take Microsoft certs? No, just in the beginning, just right in the beginning, we, uh, mm -hmm. we did a testing to see if the questions, so the yep. questions and answers was there, and we as TSs could see it, and we could actually... Um, um, add to it or you could go through like a demo like a pre-demo but we've not done it yet um the new version of it we just done the the testing of the questions yeah um, mm -hmm. cool. that's about because this has been in, going for about a year now i believe well uh, this one this was it started in beta and let's just say spring yeah april 1st and it ended I, I took it April 8th, so yeah. it was like two days, I think, after it went into beta. Um, yeah. And then I was, I don't know, I was absolutely upset because the day that it came out of beta, right, <clears throat> when it was released, people were taking it and getting their certificates and their badges right away. And mm -hmm. those beta testers still had to wait for another three weeks. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Um yeah. But here's that page. We're going to, we'll supply the links to this, right? And, and of course, there's a learn module. Uh, <clears throat> when it was initially released in beta, 
there was not an official learn module. They just literally, and Frank can talk about this sometime, but cobbled together a bunch of other resources, AZ 500 stuff and things like that, right? But now it has its own official learn module. <clears throat> um, I've actually had a lot of discussion about this over the past few weeks. A lot of customers are like, okay, how did you pass? Why, you know, what resources did you use? I'm not a good, good example. I use these products every day. I took the exam in like 15 minutes and mm -hmm. I passed, right? Because I, I work at this stuff all the time. However, with these learn modules and, and absolutely need hands-on, um, John Savile, our good buddy John, has a uh, study cram. And the people that I have talked to that have used this with the hands-on, they've been able to absolutely pass this exam. And we'll provide the, um, yeah. the links. And, stuff and that. You, you get a little bit of an advantage too, if you've taken some subsequent, I mean, some previous exams, like um, if you complete the learn module for SE 200, that's a help. I yeah. did the learn module for SE uh, 300, even after Brody and I had already passed. I, I wanted to go back through it because I knew it was some gaps, right? Um, so you don't have to take that test. And I don't think that test is for, for a person who is not familiar with the depth of the Microsoft M365D, yeah, Azure, and our XDR stuff. You, yeah, so you need people have to realize this is a different type of test, you know. And one of the reasons why it took so long to get out um, of beta is that, first of all, content is actually created at the same time that the initial exam questions are created. That's why you didn't have the learning modules to begin with. That also means that the questions are not based upon the learn modules. They're all based upon the skills measured that's in the, uh, you know, the, the exam guide uh, from there. This is actually a difficult exam to write questions for because it's not a um, functional level like SC200 where press this button to do this, press this button to do that. So it's yeah. more of the architect side of designing. Uh, mm -hmm. So they have to be very careful about that. That's why I think it took a while to get out of, um, out of beta, but also the, the the learning content, learn modules were posted. Mm -hmm. The new ones, not the fill-ins that were in place, uh, were actually posted uh, on their scheduled due date anyways. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is this, is that uh, you really need to know AZ500, and to really know AZ500, you need to know AZ700. So I'm not saying you have to go out and take those tests if you have you know, SC200. I'm just saying that you should definitely go over those learn modules mm -hmm. uh, for AZ500, AZ700. Yeah, all the, all the content is out there to be able to study for this stuff. Um, and, and Frank is always embroiled in working in this stuff. So he's, he's like the go-to person for all the, the certification stuff. Hey, hey, can I mention one thing before I hand it back over? We started this discussion today talking about the Who Hacked comic book and, and board game. I have arranged, yes, absolutely, Brody. I have arranged for um, enough that those that are listening in on Microsoft Reactor and come to our normal shows on Wednesday nights, we will have plenty of giveaways for folks. Yay! Bro Brody, why are you so happy? You're not getting one. Yeah, you're, I, in, Can you're in Canada. You don't get one. You won't won't get get one Brody. It won't get through customs. You. I, I can't believe Rod's already lined that up with inside the show. Of course it's he unbelievable. Has. Hey, yeah, I, yeah. I thought I thought I, I thought I was special. Let's I was it. sniffing the cable like they were talking about earlier. Jacques, would you like a board game built by Microsoft about hacking? Right? Yeah, of course. Why not? Exactly. We all to yeah. help you pass SC one hundred. That's what I heard. Tell me on the AC one hundred, how difficult is it between that the AC the AC five hundred and the seven hundred? Is it very different or is it much more difficult? It's, it's, it's actually easier because mm -hmm. you're not knowing, having to know which button to press. You just need to know which products to use in designing. It. So mm -hmm. when, you know, when, when you're designing solutions for customers versus pressing the buttons for your customers, that's really what it comes down to. So I mm -hmm. think it's actually an easier exam if you're working with it, you know all those products, you know, and so on, because they're not going to get into the, the, the corners of a specific product, of you know, what's the specific way to configure Azure Firewall for, 
what you're not going to get that. So that's why I think it's actually easier if you have a broad understanding. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, I, I think Rebecca's about ready to turn the lights off. On. Yep. We got to get out of here. Say, I do want to thank Rebecca since this is her last episode with us. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, Rebecca. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. We won't forget you as we become big time. We'll remember our humble beginnings. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to tune in just because you guys are so funny. I don't okay. know anything about the tech side, but you got, you, your banter is legit. Are you yeah. into gardening? Oh. Are you into gardening? Is the really I am the into question. gardening. So, yeah. So, oh, yeah, so I'll have to join our Discord channel. server. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, can you send me the Discord so I can drop it into the chat? Because I feel like it changed last time. And oh, I don't know so if it changed. Weird. I don't want to make the mistake of sending a wrong link again. Well, you're the same person that said that. I advised someone they tried to find us on Discord and they could not find the pod. It had changed. It had changed. Uh, Frank said something told. different. Yeah. That link I just put in our internal chat works. I just tested okay. it, so it should be all good. It should it's be all good. The right one. Okay. And I yeah. just took a really good screen capture of Rebecca smiling, so we'll always be able to remember. Her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Are you going to throw me up on the screen at the start of each session? Yeah, sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll fit you in somewhere. We'll, we'll no, do the sure. intro with, as your voice. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just wing it. Absolutely. Thank All you, right. Rebecca. Okay. And thank you, Jacques, and the rest of everybody on the show today. And for everybody listening in and watching, we really appreciate the support. Jacques, we're going to have you back, uh, whether you like it or not, because it sounds like you've got about 6,000 other things to talk about. So that's great. Yep. And um, you folks, you know, if you're just tuning in on MS Reactor, we run the Microsoft Security Podcast every Wednesday on Twitch and on YouTube outside of Reactor. And it's just a pleasure every each and every month to run it on Reactor as well now. So thank you for whoever you are, wherever you're listening in on, watching us. We really appreciate it. And again, thank you, Rebecca, for getting us set up on Reactor in the first place because it's been a it's been a pleasure being able to share all of this content with with people. Of course, and you have some good reactor followings. There's always people tuning in from that side. So thanks to our audience and your audiences, and, and thank you guys for coming on, you know, month to month, um, and for bringing awesome speakers and interesting content to the reactor channel. So until the next one, take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye, all. take care. Bye, everyone. Au revoir. Bye.